Hi and welcome to DCO. My name is David Copete. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you how we continued developing this design. We started with creating the plates, the straight sections to develop the wireframe design. But in this video, I'll be continuing and creating the connections between the plates and the straight sections. Some of the techniques here will be useful for other designs. So let me know if you have any questions. I'll have the script available to download and let's jump right in. All right, so what I'll be doing here is continuing on with this design and we'll create the connections here. There are different ways we can attack this, but I've been thinking about this and the best way to do this is to extract a center surface here and some points for each connection. So let's do that. Let's go back to our original preview style. So let's disable the preview on the render, the custom preview. Now let's go back to these surfaces that were extruded into the solid. See here, these were extruded into solids using this component. Now we're going to be moving it by halfway. So we'll just do this down here. And what halfway means is just divided by two. So we just divide by two this number and divide by two this number. And now we can move those by that amount and we'll be using those surfaces to move those to the middle. So notice that now they're in the middle. The reason why we want this is we're going to extract a point and extrude it to both sides so it's even. Now let's take this stuff, disable preview. Now we're going to extract a few points here. So let's start by moving this over and setting the stage here. So we're going to be extracting a few points here where they intersect with the straight sections. So let's go do that. Evaluate surface, which lets me pick a point. So we'll re-parameterize, or actually we don't need to re-parameterize. The point here is going to be construct point. And now notice that it gives us this corner point. Now it's hard to see because the frames are overlapping. So we're going to be creating a circle right at that frame or that construction plane so we can see it. So we'll do 0 0.150. So now we have this circle here. Let's disable the preview on the frame here. Okay. Now with the X, Y, and Z coordinate, we can move this down and down this way. Now we need to know what the length of this section is so we can go halfway. So the length of this, let's just do that 0.150 in the X direction. So this moves it towards the center, which is the section depth. So if I go back here, where we extended those and extruded them. There's going to be an offset here. Of 1.5. So that's going to be the depth. Because if we move it all the way to the other end, that's that entire length. So we need to actually take this, create a relay, and do a divide by two, which would place it in the middle. Okay, now we need to know how much it overlaps by, because we have here the extension. So in here we should have
So there's this one, and then there's this one. Then we have the extended ones here. So I'm just going back and looking at the script because all of the steps are here. So where this intersects where this, notice that, two polylines, where they overlap, so if they intersect, if we do curve and curve, then we can, let's see here, we could do B rep and curve. So where this polyline intersects with our surfaces, if we had get one of those lengths, and we can also do a subtraction, like if the length actually here, it shows it. If this extends by 0.4, then 0.4 divided by 2 is the location of the X or of the Y here to place it right in the middle. Now we can change this and we can change the size of this and the length in between and this will always maintain in the middle. And we're only doing it for this half set. Now we'll be doing the exact same thing for the other side, which is just taking this and see if we just add in this one and flatten the input. Now they're all created at the same time and they're done all over the place here. So what we need to do now is figure out the depth of the the middle section and the depth of the two sections and then that will be kind of the flood to keep it flush but we can always do this boundary surfaces to create a surface at that circle move it to each side so let's move this in which direction in the same direction as the surface so i'll use amplitude and it will move it perpendicular to that surface. We'll do a small number. Notice that it will go past it here. And we will extrude by the same amount two times the opposite way. So you'll see that. We'll take this and go to extrude. We'll extrude this by twice as much, which means times two in the negative direction, right? So from here, we're going to go back twice as much in the opposite direction, which is negative. Now we can use this slider as our as the length of it and yeah we can subtract from it as well now it won't look like it has a bolt it'll just look like it has like a screw going through it so if we want to you know take the time and, and create a specific bolt we could do that or we could do this let me fix this of course, like a bolt has a lot of details and things and we can get crazy and add every single bit of detail here. But the idea is to show more of a representation of the size of what you'll be using to connect it. So let's say this is a 0.25 length this way and a 0.05 this way. Okay, well, we'll be creating another entire set here. So copy this down. But instead of the length being 0.25, we'll do 0.2. And instead of it being less, it's going to be 0.06. So this creates a bit of a uh, bolt and 
washer, I guess you would call it. More of a representation of the connection here. And now let's go back and preview everything else again, including the connections. And I guess we can just preview it using the custom preview so you can see it a little bit more clearly. And that's only one bolt. So now that we have it at this location, well, we need to move it down from the center to the opposite direction. Now, here's the thing. We do need to move it relative to the construction plane. So now we'll take this and we will move. We'll do one at a time because we can always copy the script. All right, let's take this and move it in which direction? Well, in the same direction as the, the surface here. So we'll go to move. We will have to deconstruct. So let's deconstruct this plane. And now let's see if we are, if it lets me move them in the X direction. So we'll use amplitude. We'll go in the X direction, this motion, and we'll be moving this one. So notice that it moves it in that same direction and they need to be corresponding. So we'll do, let's see, 0 0.150. All right, so if we do that to this one, well, we can also do it to this one. So now we'll disable the preview on these. And now if we do it in one direction, then we can do it in the opposite direction. So we'll go to a negative component and just use that as our motion input. And we'll do that again for the other one. So we've created two sets of connections spaced by this. So this is going to be the spacing and of course we can change this. And to be consistent, we can take this, copy it down. We'll just plug all of these into one custom preview and then we'll change the color as soon as we're done with this. So. so now the structure not only has the plates and the overlapping straight sections, but now we have the ability to create a subtraction through the plates, a subtraction through these. So when you are to develop this, you have the connections already taken care of and all of this is already baked into the geometry so you can put it into a sheet and cut it out. So like I said before, I post videos every week where I share with you how to use parametric tools for architecture. This particular one was creating connections, which is something I've been doing lately. So make sure to follow me. If you want to download the script, go to the website capettidavid.com. There you can find this and other scripts that can help you get started with parametric design. So thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you all on the next one. I'll make sure to drop the link for the previous tutorial. Um, so thank you.